Hey everyone, welcome back to the Tinnitus Relief Podcast. Today's episode will focus on preventing tinnitus spikes using earplugs. We're going to talk about loud places, restaurants, motorcycles, everyday loud sounds, music, concerts, and how to strategically use earplugs. I'm here today with Jay Clark, CEO and founder of Earpiece, a company that makes earplugs. So between my audiology background and Jay's experience of working with individuals and users every day around their earplugs. This should be a fun podcast episode. Jay, please tell us about your users and how they're using your earplugs. And then I'll give my opinion on the science and how we can prevent tinnitus spikes. And welcome to the Tinnitus Relief Podcast. Yeah, Ben, thank you so much for having me. And it's great to great to see you again. Our users are broken into a couple of different categories the the our biggest and our original sort of cohort was our music audience and they are generally using earplugs for loud environments where they really do need protection and they know that they're going to be more comfortable if they do use protection so going to a nightclub going to a loud bar going to especially indoor music concerts at arenas where the you know the decibels can get up into sustained 110 115 db range and then general music festivals that's a, a really big market for us as music festivals actually and that's how that's how they, i found you about a decade ago and we were in contact then yeah uh, that's also how i got tinnitus that's the cause of my tinnitus is loud noise exposure through concerts and music festivals and like you said indoor concerts typically are the loudest we can measure yeah. the loudness of sound through a simple app on our smartphone and there are different apps that you can use to measure decibel levels and the safe listening levels for most people who are going to a concert if you're going to an occasional concert try to keep those levels under 90 decibels db spl for those who want the specific measurement and if it's above 90 then it's a good idea to have earplugs so tell us more about what are the everyday problems that people have with earplugs like for example oh i can't fit it in my ear or i'm not sure how to use it now that they know that using earplugs in loud situations like a concert is useful. What are the everyday struggles or pieces of wisdom for those who are trying to prevent tinnitus spikes? I think the no the number one piece of wisdom, and the, I literally, I have done this myself and I have been rescued by, I think particularly the 930 Club in Washington, DC, is you get super comfortable knowing that you're going out to a club that you've been to a bunch of times before and you get there and you realize that you've forgotten your earplugs. It's literally just don't forget your earplugs. So, you know, we, our, our plugs come with a case that you clip onto your key ring so you don't forget them. But the, the number one thing if, is, it, is just put the earplugs by the door. The, the second thing is complaints about fit. We have people come to us all the time that are, are switching from another brand where they're looking for something that is just more comfortable, softer, more low profile in the ear. We had our, we got two patents on our pro plug and it, it's for the way that it fits in the ear canal and it minimizes slit leaks so that the, the seal created by the ear plug is outstanding. And yeah, let's talk, let's talk about minutes, that. For, let's talk about that for a moment because Simply having earplugs and putting them in the ear does not mean that we're using the earplugs the way they're designed, right? So you and your company, right. when you design earplugs, and when you put it on the label of this can reduce your decibels 9 dB, 15 dB, 25 dB, dB stands for decibel, that's based on someone using it properly. And probably the biggest mistake I see Correct. with foam earplugs is that people, they take the foam earplug and they shove it, they just try to squeeze it in their ear. And then it's pretty much hanging out. It's not deep in the ear canal. And that is actually, that's actually not preventing that much sound. What we want to do is roll it up in our fingers, lift our ear up, put it in the ear, wait five seconds for the foam to expand. And that it, and then we're using those foam earplugs the way they're designed. So tell us more about other tips and tricks like this for how someone can really have the best 
the best care for their ears? I, I would say the number one thing is just to practice. So for our earplugs, they're they are very soft, sort of velvet finished silicone. So you don't you don't have to roll anything up. The number one technique, obviously, is you reach over your your head, pull up on your ear, opens up your ear canal, and then you hold the plug properly to put it into your ear. And that is it's very simple, but it, it does take a little bit of practice. And using them, putting them on, taking them out, putting them on, taking them out a couple of times before you actually get into the situation where you're locked in with a bunch of people in the dark and you're trying to do it for the first time can can obviously be tough, it's particularly for somebody that hasn't done it before. So a little bit of practice goes goes a long way. And then make sure that you have the right tip size. So our plugs come with multiple tip sizes. And if you have, if you have smaller ear, ear canals, then... If you try them at home and they feel too big and you're not getting a good fit, then you know that you can switch down to the smaller tip to get a good solid insertion into the ear canal and that you know that you'll be protected. Very important point. Uh, when I was working in clinics every day, we looked in ears. That was our job, right? Look in ears, test hearing, measure tinnitus, measure hearing loss, et cetera. And I would say about 20% of people have very small ear canals where the standard right. size earplug exactly. simply can't fit. So we've even gone so far as if someone only has foam earplugs, cutting the edges of the foam earplugs to make it smaller. Now, of course, that's sort of a, a hack way to do it, but there's actual smaller size earplugs that one can purchase. And your earplugs, other earplugs on the market, they're fairly affordable. Just a piece of education that for someone who does want to prevent hearing loss, prevent, you know, imp reduce tinnitus spikes, save their hearing, protect their hearing. You can get foam earplugs very cheap. You can get reusable earplugs like Earpiece and others for under $50 for a pair, sometimes even under $30 for a pair, which is great. And then for those who want custom molded plugs, either for concerts or if they're a musician, that's about $200 a pair through an audiologist. And that involves an ear mold impression of the ears. Anything is better than nothing. And then there's different levels of how serious someone wants to take it. In today's podcast, we're going to talk about live music and then for musicians who are actually playing music. And then we'll talk about uh, motorcycles and other uh, loud noise hobbies. So any other comments here on those who like going to concerts, any tips and tricks from what you've seen and the feedback you've received from your users on what's actually helping them protect their hearing? So I, I, I think just remembering them wearing them properly, and then taking breaks. Taking breaks is a really good way to reset. And I know that you, you're you going to be able to speak to this uh, better than, than I can in terms of the way the actual st structure of the inner ear kind of recovers even with a short break. But even getting out of the sound for two or three minutes can really go a long way in terms of minimizing the actual damage to the inner ear. Yeah, I'll speak on that. So the big equation or what science has shown leads to noise induced hearing loss is the duration right. of time we spend in a loud environment. Volume. So taking a break is a good way to actually just reduce the intensity of sound that's coming into your ears. And in terms of your eardrums, well, your eardrums can take it. Most people might think, oh man, I'm, I need to protect my eardrums. My eardrums are going to be damaged. But when we look at the science of the ear, and we'll put it on the screen right now, the eardrum is just the entryway into the hearing system. In a similar way, the lens of your eye is just an entryway into your whole visual pathway. So past the eardrum, there's three small bones that push sound through like a piston on an engine, vibrating and creating energy. And then there's the cochlea, the inner ear, the hearing organ. And that's where hearing loss can happen. That's where the little hair cells, stereocilia, connect with the nerve. That's the area we want to protect. So the eardrum and the middle ear bones, they can take loud noise. They don't need a break. But that inner ear, getting yourself breaks and reducing the amount of time you're around a very loud noise, those are great strategies. Also for concert goers, we've all met those, maybe you are one of them, who likes to be right next to the bass, right next to the speaker. That can be very dangerous, especially if you have tinnitus or if you're managing tinnitus. Just be careful. I've seen it a number of times where someone is doing well with their tinnitus. They forget their earplugs. They go to a loud concert or a loud bar where there's loud music, and then they have a spike. And then 
sometimes that can set them back and they have to go through a treatment process to get back to their baseline. So this is very serious. And for those who have tinnitus or sound sensitivity, hyperacusis, uh, earplugs can and should be used strategically. This is an interruption from today's podcast episode to announce the winner of the weekly Sunday treble health giveaway. Every week, we give away some of the most helpful tools to help you manage tinnitus, and all you have to do to qualify to be a winner is to subscribe to our YouTube channel, number one, and number two, go to treble.health slash giveaway. Again, that's treble.health slash giveaway, and put in your email address to join our email list, and with those two pieces of information, you'll be qualified to enter. This week's giveaway winner will receive a Sound Oasis BST100 sound machine. This device has almost 20 unique sounds that can be played for tinnitus, and it even has a computer chip that holds the sounds inside of the device. It does not rely on Bluetooth. This can help with your work from home station, your office, helping falling asleep at night. It has crickets, white noise, pink noise. Overall, it's a great product for sound therapy. So make sure you follow the link treble.health slash giveaway. It will be posted in the description of this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can qualify to win free tinnitus tools and sound therapy equipment. The results will be announced every Sunday during our weekly podcast episodes. This week's winner is Tammy J. Tammy, I hope you enjoy the new sound therapy machine you'll be receiving in the mail. No shipping charges, completely free. And for everyone else, Make sure you follow and let's get back to the Tinnitus Relief Podcast episode. As we mentioned earlier, there's different strengths of earplugs. So uh, for example, Jay, one, one, one thing that I love about earpiece and other earplugs that have different filter strengths is that for someone who has sound sensitivity, hyperacusis, at the beginning, they might be so sensitive to sound that everyday sounds like water running, dishes clanking, driving in a car, they just can't tolerate it. It sounds way too loud. So we start them in the maximum strength earplugs. And then over time, as they get better through the treatment, we reduce the filter of noise so that they're getting back to normalcy and eventually they don't need the earplugs anymore. So that's a great feature that we always look for in earplugs when we're recommending them as well. It is is always great on a near daily basis. We have people contact us about, you know, I'm a singer in a band and I, I just, I really have to be able to hear everything or I'm a drummer and I've got two horns right next to me, or I'm a waiter that's constantly walking in front of the speakers at this nightclub and we've got something for all of them, which is great. Let's talk about musicians and let us know in the comments below. Do you go to concerts? Number one, are you a musician? Number two, or do you ride motorcycles? Curious to see out of our audience here who falls into those categories. So just leave a comment on YouTube so we can engage here as a community. Let's talk about music and those who play music. So I sing, I play music, I play saxophone back in the day, I play acoustic guitar nowadays, still love hip hop. For musicians, having earplugs at different filter strengths is important because if you're playing indoors with some of your, your flatmates or in an apartment, you might not need that much reduction of, of the sound. But if you're playing at a live show, if you're playing at a, in a sort of basement or a tight club, then the sound's going to be much louder and you'll probably want the higher filter strengths. What kind of feedback have you received, Jay, from musicians? And also tell us about um, when your product, the reusable earplugs, typically under $40 a pair, Tell us when those um, actually don't meet the needs of musicians and maybe when they should get something that's you know, more advanced because that does happen. Yeah, absolutely. In, in general, our product line will serve most musicians. If you are playing in a very small, very loud club in a punk band, like you should probably have custom ear molds with a 27 dB filter in them. The maximum there is. The, the maximum, the maximum there is. What we find generally is that for most musicians that are playing in mid-sized clubs, if you're a DJ that either are mid-level or are, are, are high or max level filters are going to work for you. Like there's generally, there's generally enough up and down in the volume and there's generally enough breaks where your ears can reset it's not it's not a constant like 
incredibly high volume level, but we do, we definitely have musicians that carry two sets of plugs with them because during one part of the show, they're up front with the guitarist and they're going to wear our medium level plug. And then at another part of the show, like in the second half, they're in the back and they switch to something that's that's a higher DB. So it, it is in general, our high protection filter sort of gives, you know, that's 20 DB and that gives a, a nice breadth of protection for most levels. But if you're in the back and you're a drummer and you're next to a bunch of horns and the speakers, you really do need a, a higher level of protection for sure. Yeah. So number one, make sure you use earplugs, right? That's what we're talking about here. It doesn't matter <laughs> if you don't even do not do you, not forget them. Do not forget them and use them and and, and have them. At least foam earplugs, preferably something reusable, maybe a custom plug if you go for very high fidelity sound or you want something that because you have a unique ear canal shape. So just some some tips there. And number two is have a strategic plan for the environment you're in. Like you had mentioned, sometimes you're in a gig that's very loud. Other times it's loud, but maybe I don't need earplugs tonight. Well, be careful with that thinking because you speak, you know, I want to hear from you on this, but I speak to musicians who've done music for decades, who've been in live music for decades. The strange thing about noise-induced damage, about damage to the cochlea, the hearing organ, and those little hair cells, it doesn't ha usually happen instantly. It's usually a delayed response that happens over decades. So, mu so musicians typically have earlier onset of hearing loss. Now that's manageable. That's okay. Musicians also have an earlier onset of tinnitus or tinnitus ringing in the ears. And of course, we want to prevent that. So as I said earlier, we're, we're focusing here on prevention. We can always talk about treatments, solutions, management tips, even the causes of tinnitus, right? But if we can prevent the condition in healthcare in general and for hearing health, that's amazing. That's tenfold the effect of of, of what we're doing here with our impact. Can I just speak Tell, to that real please fast, go ahead. Pl please go ahead, yeah. Yeah, and I think that this is one of the most insidious things about hearing loss, particularly noise-induced hearing loss that we do our best to communicate about is that we're all going to lose our hearing. It just, our, you know, normally it sort of sets in sort of in your late 60s or in your 70s, and then it just progresses. Right now, just like you said, if you have consistently damaged the little hair cells inside of the cochlea, you know, particularly the, the hair cells that are at the entrance of the cochlea that that perceive the higher frequencies and those hair cells are damaged and damaged and then become permanently damaged, that you are going to start experiencing hearing loss at a younger age. And, you know, if you're like me in your mid forties and you're still going to, to shows and you, you still got tons of energy and you still want to go see your, you know, your favorite band at the local club, it just becomes progressively more important to protect your hearing because you will start losing your, at, instead of 65, you can start losing your hearing at 55 or 50 when you are at your peak earning age, right? Like peak of your career. And there's so much data correlation between people who are losing their hearing and like underperformance at work, social isolation. It is a very serious problem to lose your hearing when you are in your prime social and like working years. Like it is, it is debilitating and potentially and potentially very costly it's it's spot on and the numbers you said there the data is is absolutely correct that early onset hearing loss for musicians or people who have loud noise exposure tend to be in their 50s instead of for most later adults natural age-related hearing loss comes on in their 60s or early 70s so you're spot on there when i think about this just the main message here is hey you may be watching this because you have tinnitus, because you have tinnitus. And that is an early symptom of hearing loss. So just take that as an early sign. Okay, I can't go back. I can't save the hearing from weeks, years in the past, but I can start today. They say the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is today. Same thing goes with protecting your hearing. Yeah. I, all, all the time, I, I have I have musicians say to me, you know, I, I've got nothing left left to lose. And I'm like, oh, you do, you do. You, we're we're having a conversation. Like, you definitely have left to lose. Yeah, yeah. So start today. 
Absolutely. And the last group we wanted to talk about is um, loud noise exposure for as a hobby in motorcycles. Tell us about your users who ride motorcycles or are around similar loud noises and some tips for the community who may want to protect their hearing while riding and enjoying motorcycles. I think that the thing that I certainly did not know until we started to investigate creating a whole line of hearing protection for motorcycles is that, and you can, you're going to be able to speak better to this than, than I am, Ben, but it isn't the volume that we perceive as volume that actually does the damage to our, our inner ear. It's sound pressure, right? And it's sound pressure that gets translated into what we, we sort of perceive as volume. And the sound pressure on a highway, even in a full face helmet, the way that the, the air makes the helmet vibrate is above 100 decibels, even in an even in a top of the line helmet, and it can go and it can go up to between 100 and 110 decibels depending on your speed. And the data is amazing. I mean, you it, it can be safe for 10 minutes on a highway in a helmet, and it's very tricky because you don't really perceive the sound as like like a rock concert, even though it's the same amount of sound pressure. And you can have your most you know, nice helmets now have communication systems in them that are very clear. You can talk to your friends, you can play your music, your favorite podcast, whatever. And all of that can sound normal, but the sound pressure is enough to damage your hearing very, very quickly. So, you know, during, during the pandemic, you know, we pivoted away from music because all of the concerts were canceled and we really focused on our motorcycle audience and that audience has not gone away and has only grown which is which is fantastic and um it, it really makes it makes a huge difference to your protection and your comfort it's a huge deal to take a three-hour nice ride around with your buddies and get off and not be fatigued and not have your ears buzzing and have been able to listen to your music, talk to your friends, talk to your partner on the back. And it is a safer, but even more importantly, like it is a much more comfortable experience to protect your hearing with a product that turns the volume down and doesn't distort the sound. The yeah, way very that, important. That our, I was just, that I was our, just, our hearing protection does. I was just looking up the information and they say that straight off the line today, Harley, Harley, Harley Davidson exhaust systems can emit noise as high as 80 decibels. So that's give or take, depending on the model. So this probably says that the, the average new motorcycle is just safe, just below the thresholds of, okay, if you're riding this for 10 hours a week, you're safe. But I would still recommend having a helmet just for your brain and your head, of course, but also one that can take away some of that sound coming in from the motor, from the exhaust. But we know that so many people choose motorcycles that are very loud on purpose. And if that's, I don't know if that person even cares about protecting their hearing. Maybe that's a lifestyle choice. But if you're listening to this, you know someone who's made that decision to ride a very loud motorcycle, show them some evidence, maybe persuade them to protect their hearing. Just start there because the loudness of your motorcycle itself is the biggest cause of all of this, of course. But then the second step is what do you have in your ears or on top of your head over your ears to protect your hearing? Can I just push back on that a, a little bit? And sure. I, I will, and, and I, I'd, I'll, I'll send you the information that you can put in the show notes. It is so like sitting, sitting on your Harley Davidson is probably just sitting on your Harley Davidson is probably safe, right? With without a helmet on, right? But and getting out onto the highway and driving your home where the where the RPMs are up and the the engine is louder, that's another level. But it is truly it is the pressure that is caused by the vibration of the helmet inside of the helmet that does the most damage to that does the the, the the most that does most of the damage to your hearing and there are tons of riders that do that do these you know big long rides with their riding buddies and universally claim about issues with their with their hearing and it's it is it is and they drive around in full face helmets and it is the it is you know 105 105 db inside your helmet that 
you know, again, it doesn't sound like a rock concert. It doesn't, it doesn't sound the way that we're familiar yeah, with I can, volume. I can touch on that because I'll, when, I'll get, when there's vibe, when there's vibration, for example, when we're next to really loud bass, mo a lot of the time is actually vibrating our head in a certain way that creates the sound wave in the inner ear. And that sound wave can potentially be so loud to damage the hearing. And this is along the same principles of what makes bone conduction headphones work. Okay, I'm not hearing the sound through my ears. It's coming in through the bones. The bones are rattling and vibrating at certain pitches and frequencies. And that's why perceived sound. The similar effects can happen there with the loud noise of riding in a motorcycle and having that helmet, which is sort of helping conduct the vibrations. But you're right that that is something to really look at. And anecdotally, I can certainly share that many people who have made riding motorcycles a hobby for years have a higher prevalence of hearing loss in the clinic. It's something that we would ask, uh, what do you, do you have any risks of loud noise exposure, gunfire? Uh, that's another angle for hearing protection. So important mm -hmm. gunfire, motorcycles, loud music concerts. We ask those questions because they are correlated with hearing loss. Cool. And I, I'll get, I'll get some of that data over to you that you can put in the show notes. It's, it's fascinating, it's sort of counterintuitive. Yeah. Absolutely. Jay, you've shared a lot of information about hearing protection and how that can help someone prevent tinnitus spikes, a topic near and dear to my heart. Tell us about how our viewers can find you and earpiece. Just we are in, on online is definitely the easiest way to get to us. So earpiece.com, E-A-R. P -E -A -C -E, like peace on earth.com. And we've got products for, we've got two product lines for music, two product lines for moto. And then we have a whole sleep line. Our pro line of products has a design and utility patent. They're the, supremely comfortable and the filter technology turns the volume down evenly. So it's flat attenuation. So you can hear the highs, hear the lows, and you can leave your favorite rock concert or bar or music festival without your ears ringing and having had a great time, you know, easily talking to your friends and listening to the music. Excellent. Jay, thank you so much. Thank you for being here and for your time. Talk to you soon. Ben, great to see you. Take care.